Hello, uh, this video is all about uh, Microsoft accounts and local user accounts. Um, something I've been asked about quite a lot in comments on my videos and generally. Um, for context, uh, pretty much about 90% of the computers that I see have got Microsoft accounts on them. Of that 90%, I would say about 10% do that on purpose and about 90% have just got one because the computer told them to get one. Um, I'm not going to try and make you decide. I'm going to give you information so that you can make your own decision. Uh, over the years, I've learned uh, a quite important lesson is that most people don't make bad decisions deliberately because they're not generally idiots so that um <laughs> that kind of made me wonder why people make bad decisions and i can't speak for anything other than computers because that's too big an issue but with computers if you've got uh if you've made a bad decision with the computer it's usually because at the time the decision was made what ultimately turned out to be the correct decision wasn't presented to you as an option that you could choose from if that makes sense so um i'm not going to make your mind up for you i'm going to give you uh, a few thoughts a bit of information uh, and then you're free to decide what you want to do based on that knowing that whatever you decide will be correct because you'll have you know the options presented will include the right option uh, so let's get started now um with a local user account um there are some distinct advantages uh, with a microsoft account there are some distinct advantages as well i think the main starting point is that when you're using windows uh, 11 home because that's where we are currently when this video is being made uh, it insists on you creating or using a microsoft account when you initially sign in on a new computer older versions of windows uh you just said you didn't have the internet or it just set you up with a local account anyway and uh, more robust accounts were created by domains and that kind of thing so there are ways around that windows 11 you can have a local user account on windows 11 it is possible you either sign in with a microsoft account and then turn it into a local user account after that or you use a few tricks to get that local user account straight away uh, but either way um, you end up with an account now let's look at the main fundamental differences as i see it now with a local user account <laughs> i've used local user accounts for a long time uh, it's mainly because um anything involving the internet or an exchange of data over the internet tends to be a little bit slower plus the way windows boots is a bit annoying because that boot process is interrupted by the login um, windows loads to the point where it now wants to know who you are and then you put your username and password in, and then it goes to your user profile and it loads stuff associated with that so on on older versions of windows take for example windows xp you would turn the computer on the cogs would grind and then it would present you with a login and it would pause there and then when you you know type your password in or click the user account and type your password in it would then carry on loading and that would take even more time that annoyed the out of me because i would quite like to turn my computer on go and make a cup of tea or something or faff about a bit and come back and there's the desktop. So I I was quite annoyed by the fact that you type your password in and still it would then take almost as long again to actually present you with a desktop. I'll discuss that more in, in a video about the various versions of Windows operating systems. So that will provide more context to that. But that was very annoying. Uh, so I moved to local user account quite quickly. Uh, also, you can use um, control user passwords too to auto login, but you still have a password. Um, so uh, that's, you know, that's quite advantageous for a local user account, how you can just not set a password, leave the password blank. You turn the computer on, 
there's the desktop, no login. That's kind of cool, kind of fast. If you're the only person using the computer and it's your only computer, why not do that? Because those, those few seconds, those minutes, you won't get back. <laughs> that, that Typing your password in, waiting it for it to load, that is time you won't get back. Uh, and I'm just sowing a seed there because I know what you're probably worried about. Uh, also, uh, with a local user account, when you initially set the computer up, it's faster because it doesn't go online. It doesn't synchronize account stuff. It doesn't go looking for updates. So getting to that desktop is a lot faster with a local user account when you're initially setting up a computer. Um, that's more a professional thing. It's just quicker. Um, also, I don't need to know people's account details unless I need to know them. So I will always set up the computers that I build, that I assemble uh, with a local user account and then they're free if they want to use a Microsoft account or set everything else up after that. I don't need to know their details. Uh, it just makes things faster as well. Uh, so yeah, so when you set it up, you used to just be able to turn the internet off and then it would automatically say, oh, you want a local user account. So you let it do that. Uh, and that was faster so that then once the desktops arrive, then you can do the Windows updating without. So it, it just makes it it just makes it faster. Um, so. That's probably got you thinking about security, hasn't it? Because you're probably thinking, oh, without a user account password, it's not secure, is it? Well, even with a Microsoft account. Or a local user account with a password for that matter, your data still isn't secure anyway. I recover data from lots of computers that, have, that are faulty. I don't need to know their username and password because I can get access to the data anyway. It's not a security thing. It isn't. If you use BitLocker, then yes, it is. Or if you use Desktop, which I think is now called ESET Endpoint Protection, that is basically... That's industrial standard encryption, military grade encryption. So that actually protects your data. So if you're worried about security, why you should be, you shouldn't be, <laughs> you'll be using that. You won't be using a login password. That doesn't, that doesn't offer any security at all. What it does do, however, is it stops people logging in, like, you know, members of your family, usually small children, logging in and messing your system up. It does, it does protect you from that. It doesn't deter criminals particularly uh, because if they wanted your data, they could probably get hold of it anyway. But the point is, they don't want your data. I let that hang on purpose. If you get your laptop stolen, it doesn't really matter whether you've got a username or password on it. If it does contain important documentation, important data, which some of the laptops I deal with do, then you will be using... BitLocker, you will be using something actually that works that's more robust. So if you if your laptops get stolen, they're not going to go looking for stuff. Because if they get caught, which they probably have been already, if they're starting to do stuff involving sort of, I'm going to say white collar crime, involving, you know, trying to blackmail you with photos or steal your banking details when they come before the judge they will have a different experience <laughs> it's problematic for them what they get away with is stealing your laptop erasing it selling it on very little consequence to that very little consequence to that so it's when they start getting involved in other stuff that's that's when the judge will send them to prison or you know that's when they tend to come down a little bit harder so don't think your password is there for security because it isn't and don't be worried about it for security because actually they don't really care about your photos um uh, you probably don't anyway if you think about it um the best thing to do with photos because you've got thousands i see machines with thousands of photos on the best thing to do with photos is to pick the ones that are good send them away to um, be developed and then when they come back, stick them in an album, write the names of the people on the photos on the back. 
that's something they did at the turn of the century very useful because it identifies who's in the photo rather than i mean you probably got photos it's like who's that because you can't remember who they are write it on the back also with an album you can put in things like bus tickets or cinema tickets or leaves or something you know something else to to make it into more of a sort of a scrapbook thing to to to, it just makes it more interesting um (laughs) so that when people come and visit you you can say have a look at this here's our holiday and they can at least pretend to be interested by asking pertinent questions <laughs> let that hang a little bit so i don't think the microsoft account gives you security because it doesn't um and you know no one is that interested in your data anyway so uh having turning it on and going to the step going to the desktop is actually quite important for me and i i quite like that um so that's why i use a local user account also local user accounts don't rely on internet connections as well which if you've used a chromebook you'll you'll think oh yeah i get that uh and and i think the machine is just a little bit faster because it's not collecting that sort of data more than a bit so that's what local user accounts are kind of about. All the data is stored locally. Now with a Microsoft account. Now with a Microsoft account, it's it's obviously on a new computer. If you've got Windows 11 home, it's going to be easier to set it up because you haven't got to do the little hacks or the tweaks or the, you know, you just say, all right then and go and run with it. Um, it also does actually, even though I've sort of poo-pooed it a little bit, it does actually feel quite reassuring to type a password in because it's like, ooh, what a password. Um, that is great for a family environment. That's great um, because it is. Uh, any other admin account can still access the data. So the hard drive can still be taken out and the data can be read. Uh, the I suppose the, the key thing that, the other, you know, I mentioned that like 10% of the 90% like having a Microsoft account and they do it on purpose. A lot has to do with this idea of synchronization so that when you sign in with that, the machine synchronizes in quite a lot of different ways. That's kind of helpful. If you just got one machine, obviously it doesn't matter that much. Um, so you could use a pin to log in with a Microsoft account. That's something I'd like to mention. So you think, oh, I've got a type password in. That's annoying. You've just said that's time in your life you can't get back. But you could use a pin. It doesn't need to be an actual number but it can be as low as four digits. So you can go dink, dink, dink. You haven't got to press return at the end of it. It automatically carries on. It still has to carry on, but it just makes that little bit, makes it that little bit easier. Obviously having four characters is not is less security, but no one actually knows how long your pin is. So, and remember they don't care. They'll erase it and sell it. They won't go rifling for your stuff unless you're David Peckham, David Peckham, David Beckham, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, how important do you think you are? Mm. If you're quite important, then yeah, get desktop, get ESET, use BitLocker. Um, Microsoft accounts can be used to uh, associate with licenses. Um, so if you've got a retail copy of Windows, you can link that to your Microsoft account. So the activation is easier to to arm and disarm and that kind of thing. Uh, if you've got Office 365, you need a Microsoft account to use that. But you don't need to sign in with a Microsoft account on the computer to have the Office 365 up and running with its associated Microsoft account. So you don't need, so there is that. You also don't need to sign into Office with a Microsoft account other than to activate it and in- install it. Uh, but it, the actual Microsoft account can become quite a nice central place to manage those kind of things, those kind of licenses. Also, you need a Microsoft account to access uh, a lot of the Microsoft online resources, the TechNet resources. Um, You need a Microsoft account uh, to use things like OneDrive, to use Outlook.com for emails. Um, I think basically Microsoft sort of looked over the fence at Apple and thought, oh, that's quite good. Uh, Apple obviously have got a completely closed ecosystem. So without an Apple ID, you can't really do anything on the on the phone. Uh, you can turn it on and set it up, but you can't, that's about as far as it gets. 
but Microsoft saw that and thought well, that's quite good. So you got the Microsoft Store as well. So you need a Microsoft account to use that. Although if you've ever bought anything from the store, stick it in a comment because I'm interested because I've never bought anything from the store. Uh, as Windows, Windows 10 has got an S mode. Um, which means you can only install programs from the uh, store, which is basically a complete homage to Apple and the Apple Store. You can disable that, but once you disable it, you can't re-enable it. So you you can use a Microsoft account to lock the machine down quite, you know, in quite a sophisticated way. Uh, in terms of family stuff, though, I think Google has got that sussed. The Google family link is is pretty cool on a on a chromebook so microsoft are sort of dipping into these various things from apple and google and that they're implementing them i think it's still it's not you know it's still very much early days in that um uh, another reason for having a microsoft account might be that you get better adverts i'll let that hang because obviously ooh, i don't want them, you know if if you believe that um Microsoft is collecting data, that sort of big data. If you believe they're collecting it for some sort of sinister reasons, then OK, fine. Um, but if you if you genuinely believe that Bill Gates is using little nanobots to control elderly people via um, vaccine injections, if you genuinely believe that, then <laughs> I don't understand you. Um, because if I was Bill Gates, I'm not, but I think he probably has got a sense of humour. I think if you could control old people with nanobots, if you could do that, think of what you could do. Think of the fun you could have. Oh. <laughs> so obviously that's not happening. So if you look at an individual bird in your garden and watching hopping around, you get information about that bird, maybe what food it likes. You you get, you know, but that's not what this kind of data is. This this isn't really about that. If if you look at lots of birds in lots of gardens, then you get migration patterns and migration patterns are much more interesting than what an individual bird is up to. So a lot of it is to do with targeting the advertising. It's, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. They collect the data to, to watch what you go to to target the advert so that where you go to becomes relevant there are issues with that in terms of suggestions and how that steers people in directions but that's not the purpose of this video to discuss that i might do another video about that uh so i don't mind targeted adverts i just turn them off anyway if i can so you don't get them with local user accounts because you can say no to all the settings on that and i think you can say no to them anyway so yeah, it's a side issue. If you look at my videos about setting up Windows, you'll find I say no to a lot of things. You can do that with or without a Microsoft account. So the, the point is, uh, you do need to have to, you probably have to have a Microsoft account for something, even if it is just to use OneDrive, the five gig of OneDrive for free, even if it is because of, of Office 365. So you might have to, you probably, I've, I've got a Microsoft account. It's just I don't use it to sign into Windows. So that's an important distinction. I'm not saying don't have a Microsoft account. I'm saying maybe don't use it to log into Windows. You can still use it to log into OneDrive once Windows is loaded. You can still use it on Outlook.com. You can, you can still use it. It's just don't use it as your main login. Because I think the machine is faster with a local user account. That's all. Now, I like empirical evidence. I change my opinions based on empirical evidence. Over the years I've been using Microsoft operating systems, Microsoft accounts have always been, I think, slower. They've affected the performance of the machine. So I've always used local user accounts. If you want to sort of realize that yourself, because part of this is um, like an experience. I, I want this to be like a sort of queue jump. So rather than spend 20 years using Microsoft operating systems, you listen to what I say and then you make an opinion based on that. But if you want to test it, because you should, if you set your computer up with a local user account and then switch it over to a Microsoft account, see the difference. Because I believe there is a difference. 
So that's it, really. If you've got any, um, if you've got any questions, um, then obviously stick them in the comments. Um, in summary, using a local user account means you can turn it on. There's the desktop. You haven't got to wait for that login, which I think disrupts things and is quite annoying. Uh, there's no security, particularly security benefits of doing it because you can, the data can be accessed whether you've got a Microsoft account or not. Um, the machine, I think, is faster with a local user account because it's not doing all the stuff associated with a Microsoft account. You can still use your Microsoft account to synchronize Edge or to use OneDrive or to use Outlook.com or to access Microsoft TechNet. Or, you know, you can still have a Microsoft account and utilize it. Um, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. All the new machines that I build, I put a local user account on unless someone has says I've got a reason for putting a Microsoft account. on. See what I did there? See how that sort of shifts the paradigm a bit. If you have any questions, um, stick them in the comments. Um, if that prompts another video, I'll make one. If you have bought something from the Microsoft store, and giving them money, then I'd like to know what you bought, just out of interest, because um, I've never bought anything from it. Unlike the Apple, where you have to buy everything, or you have to yeah you know, to log in, you have to have an account for that. Um, uh, liking and subscribing is obviously appreciated. Uh, uh, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>